I made an Arduino based oscilloscope. It is simple and compact. You might be curious about how useful it can be. In today's video, I will introduce the building process and explain the features of this oscilloscope. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a popular choice for both hobbyists and professionals seeking reliable and trustworthy PCB fabrication services. With their easy-to-use online ordering system and a 24-7 expert support team, the whole process is hassle-free. Their service is super fast, with orders delivered right to your doorstep in just a few days. Best of all, their prices are incredibly affordable, starting at just $2 for 5 PCBs. And now, they have expanded their services to include flexible PCBs, giving you even more options to bring your projects to life. Thanks again to JLC PCB to make this project possible. If you search the internet or YouTube, you will find several simple ways to build an oscilloscope using an Arduino. The most popular of these is the one demonstrated on Radio Panches blog. There are a lot of YouTube videos based on Radio Panches blog. My video is one of them. But I thought it would be a little bit boring if I just follow the block schematic and connect the wires. So I tried to make my own version. The biggest difference from the other videos is that I designed and built a special PCB for this project. Instead of using a pre-built Arduino Uno, Arduino Nano, or any other development board, I decided to use a bare ATmega328 to make this project a little more challenging. After a year or two of using Arduino dev boards, once you have got familiar with them and understand how they work, you may want to build your own circuits and PCBs. With this in mind, I built an Arduino FM radio, and you can find that video on my channel. If you haven't seen it yet, please take a look first. I will include a link in the description of the video. For the first time in that video, I built my own circuit and I designed my own PCB using ATmega328 instead of the Arduino dev board. The FM radio worked as expected and was a very good successful experience. Since I understood the minimum ATmega328 circuit configuration, I decided to reuse part of the previous circuit for this project. Therefore, the left half of the PCB for this video is very similar to the left half of the previous PCB. As you might have guessed, both of these PCBs were made by JLC PCB, and both of them are very nicely finished, as always, and I'm very happy with them. The left side has also been improved. It is the path under the crystal that has been changed. A routing that goes under the crystal will work fine in this particular case. However, it will be a good practice to avoid this type of routing. Because in circuits that handle higher frequencies, this type of routing can introduce noise. Additionally, a single RGB LED is also added to the circuit to provide visual feedback to the user when needed. Although not directly related to the oscilloscope functionality, I also added an external power supply jack to the circuit. The addition of an LM2596 voltage regulator makes it possible to use an external power supply from 4.5 volt to 40 volt. Although this time I only use 9 volt for the power supply. The LM2596 can drive a maximum load of 3 ampere, but this project does not have a load up to 3 ampere, so it could be functioning just fine. For the other parts of the circuit, I just followed Radio Panches circuit from the block. Nothing too complicated there. With the experience from the previous project, there were no particular difficult parts to handle this time. And to connect the oscilloscope probes, I use an audio jack 
to enable the connection to an external alligator clip wire. After the design is all done, I ordered the PCB from JLC PCB again. I am always very happy with the fast production and the delivery. The quality is always high as well. The PCB has arrived, and the next step is to solder it. I always look forward to this process. The soldering time is the healing time. Most of the components are through-hole types, and a few are surface mount types. But since all the components are relatively large, soldering them was not difficult at all. Once the soldering is done, the first thing to do is to burn the bootloader to the bare 80 mega 328. Once the bootloader is burned without any problems, the next step is to transfer the 80 mega 328 to my board. After that, I can use my homebrew board like an Arduino board. Then from the Arduino IDE, upload the program shared on Radio Panches block. It looks like the program worked without any problems. Great! I will also put a link to this program in the description section of the video, in case you need it. Now, both software and hardware are standing by. I need a wheel generator to verify that my design works properly as an oscilloscope. I have several wave generators in stock. This is one I will use. Sine waves will be a good place to start with. Then I connected the output of the wave generator to the probes of the oscilloscope, and the waveform appeared on the oscilloscope display without problem. Even though the display is small, still the waveform looks pretty responsive. It seems that my homemade oscilloscope worked properly. I am confident to call this project a great success. There were no problems with the homemade PCB either, and the results were just excellent. Last but not least, let's see how far this oscilloscope can measure the waveform. As the author of the program mentioned, the maximum sampling period is 8 microseconds, so you can only observe waveforms up to about 10 kHz. This time, it's not my original circuit and software, but I enjoyed the process of modifying the circuit and designing my own PCB, and I learned a lot in the process. I have a large oscilloscope, but I learned a lot from being able to build my own measurement device like this. With this knowledge and experience, I may be able to use the RP2040 to build faster and more accurate oscilloscopes in the future. The RP2040 has an ADC that operates at clock speeds of up to 133 MHz, which is approximately 8.3 times faster than that of the 80 mega 328. And RP2040's ADC has a resolution of up to 12 bits. I assume these features allow for faster waveform display and more accurate waveform measurement. Also, the display area is limited by the small display in this project. But it would be better to use a larger LCD to display more information and render more accurate waveforms. This is one of the issues that need to be addressed in the future. With that being said, I think that's all for today's video. If you find anything wrong or something I can improve, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more exciting projects to come. See you next time. Oh,